So, you want to know about the obturator nerve, do you? Okay. First of all, we'll talk about what it does, then we'll talk about where it comes from, then we'll talk about where it goes, you know, the route that it takes, and then we'll talk about what happens if it doesn't work properly, which usually means it's being squashed by something. Okay, that's a plan. What does it do? What does the obturator nerve do? Uh, well, when people ask, lower limb, look. When people ask, I say, it is the nerve of the medial thigh. Okay, what's in the medial thigh? Well, it carries sensory innervation from some of the skin of the medial thigh, and then in here we find the adductor muscles. So it innervates adductor brevis, the short one, adductor longus, the long one, adductor magnus, the big one, and then also gracilis. And as we'll see as we go, also obturator externus, kind of an outliner, hard to remember that one. And it might innervate uh, pectineus as it goes past as well, although that can be innervated by the femoral nerve. Look how we're going off on a complicated tangent already. The obturator nerve is the nerve of the medial thigh. So when you're learning musculoskeletal stuff and limbs, the limbs are organized into compartments. So the anterior compartment has the femoral nerve and it does anterior thigh things. The medial thigh has the obturator nerve and it does medial thigh things, as in adduction, bringing the legs back to the midline. And then the posterior thigh has the sciatic nerve and it does posterior thigh things. It's not too bad when you start looking, you group it up. It gets worse when you really go into the, into the weeds. Where does it come from? Uh, huh. um, where does the obturator nerve come from? Here, we're looking at the posterior abdominal wall. Um, pelvis is down here, so we can see the kidneys, major blood vessels and what have you. And the obturator nerve comes from the lumbar plexus. The lumbar plexus is a, a network of nerves that are coming out of the lumbar vertebrae. We can just about see the L5 vertebral body there, so it's posterior to that. So, so here are the lumbar vertebrae. Um, L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, we might refer to them as. And coming out of the intervertebral foramina in between the vertebrae are the lumbar spinal nerves. L1, L2, L3, L4, L5 and so on. And this is the lumbar plexus. It takes many of the spinal nerve roots and forms other nerves from it. And the obturator nerve comes from L2, L3 and L4 um, spinal nerve roots and anterior branches of, so actually the green that we can see here, these are anterior branches, whereas the yellow are posterior. All right, so I reckon the green is gonna be the obturator nerve, and uh -huh, it's that one there, because I know where it's going to. So, that's where the obturator nerve comes from. It comes from the lumbar plexus, but we can't see it because it's covered by muscles. Now, which muscles? Well, back to the posterior abdominal wall. So the lumbar vertebrae are behind here. So the lumbar plexus is posterior to this. This muscle here is psoas major. Big chunky muscle that is gonna be a hip flexor muscle. So the obturator nerve is running inferiorly through psoas major, posterior to psoas major. Somehow it appears medially to psoas major around here somewhere. Um, this is the common iliac artery. This is the external iliac artery. So we will first see it medial to psoas major, medial to the external iliac artery. Is it there? No, no, it's, it's not there. Okay, <laughs> my one little trick for finding the obturator nerve, I don't do clickbait. <laughs> is, right, if I'm in the pelvis, what I'll look for is the brim of the bowl of the pelvis. You see what I mean, right? This, this brim here, before we get into the true pelvis. If I find a nerve running around the brim of the bowl of the pelvis, it's the obturator nerve. And it will have with it 
the obturator artery and the obturator vein, because I know where they're going. They are going through the obturator foramen. Naked pelvis, no muscles, no ligaments or anything. This is the obturator foramen. It's a whacking great big hole, but actually in life, that hole is covered by a membrane called the obturator membrane, leaving a small hole up here, a small canal called the obturator canal. <laughs> Through the obturator canal, past the obturator nerve, the obturator artery, and the obturator vein. Sometimes anatomy is just easy. <laughs> <laughs> so if the obturator nerve passes through there, look where it is. It's in the medial thigh. Look, there it is. Obturator foramen made by the bone, covered by the obturator membrane, leaving a small gap, the obturator canal, for the obturator nerve artery and vein to pass through. Ooh, a narrow canal of bone and connective tissue. And that's the sort of thing we worry about when we have important things passing through canals, because they get squashed, right? On top of that, um, I guess the main purpose of this membrane existing is so muscles can attach to it and the muscle that covers this externally is the obturator externus muscle. There's also one on the inside which is called the obturator internus muscle but we're interested in the obturator externus. The obturator externus muscle is one of the six lateral rotators of the femur at the hip so it's running from here out towards the femur. Do you want me to list the other five? No, of course, you, <laughs> no, you don't. We're not talking about that today. So the obturator externus muscle runs to the, to the femur. Now also, because it's covering this, again, it's just leaving a little gap for these things to pass through. But the obturator nerve then, the first muscle it innervates is obturator externus. Then it continues into the medial thigh. So then it innervates the muscles of the medial thigh. The obturator nerve, when it passes into the medial thigh, Splits into two branches, the anterior branch and the posterior branch. Now it's actually the posterior branch that's going to innovate obturator externus and travel posteriorly and I guess more deeply. The anterior branch will pass between a ductor brevis and a ductor longus and innovate those two. It will innovate the gracilis muscle and it will pass to the um, medial thigh skin. The posterior branch will pass between adductor longus and adductor magnus, the big adductor muscle. It will innervate adductor magnus and it will continue down to the knee. Um, adductor magnus is also innervated by branches from the tibial part of the sciatic nerve, by the way. Um, but talking about the knee, that gives me, um, reminds me of another function. So the obturator nerve is passing the hip joint and it's passing the knee joint. So it will also send sensory branches to the mm, structures of the knee, like the joint capsule and that sort of thing. So the obturator nerve is sensory to the knee joint and the hip joint, but that's a shared duty that it has. The femoral nerve and branches of the sciatic nerve also are sensory from the knee joint. And, and so on, right? Okay, but uh, nerves, these big nerves do that. So what goes wrong with the obturator nerve? Well, you can see through much of its route is well protected. Like other nerves that come out from between lumbar vertebrae, um, it's susceptible to impingement by, say, a slipped intervertebral disc or things like that in the low back. But more interesting is the path that we've described through the obturator canal, possibly through obturator externus and then deep to the fascia lata, which means that, you know, in, for example, elite athletes that have lower limb focused sports, hip focused sports, they might develop tight muscles, hypertrophied muscles, um, tough fascia, things that might compress the obturator nerve as it's passing through those narrow spaces. So if you compress the obturator nerve, then what are you likely to see or feel? This is a cause of groin pain. There are many causes of groin pain, but the pain, if the nerve is getting compressed as it's passing through the obturator's canal, would be 
deep groin pain. And what else might you see? Well, if it's innervating the adductor muscles, then weakness of those adductor muscles, compare one side to the other, would be a sign that the obturator nerve is not working properly. And of course, also paresthesia of the medial skin of the thigh would also innervate that the obturator nerve is not functioning properly. So there you go, obturator nerve. Uh, we've talked about what it does, where it comes from, its root and its branches, what it innervates and what might go wrong if it gets squashed on that root. All right, obturator nerve. See you next week <laughs> for another fascinating nerve story.